But two days ago, the powers that be at the World Economic Forum came out and said what they've been doing with Hollywood and major companies. You know, um, normalizing LGBTQ folks, including us in all stories. So that's the other piece that I think is really important. And we've worked really closely with Hollywood on this. It's not just centering the story on us, but it's we're everywhere, right? We're at your workplace. We're in your families. We're at your laundromat. We're at your grocers. We're everywhere. So why aren't we everywhere and the stories being told? It's interesting because Christians are also everywhere, but you don't see Christians saying we demand that we are in every single story. As a matter of fact, Christians are the one being ostracized and shut out of every single story. Um, and I think bringing our perspective and us as people into just everyday stories um, and putting that lens on it could, is a great place to start too. Now, in case you have not been paying attention, now you know exactly why the movies are the way they are, the characters are the way they are, the TV shows are the way they are, and why the LGBTQ agenda has invaded pretty much everything in this society. Even Disney executives are not shy to let us know that they are responsible for every queer and LGBTQ character that we see in these kids' movies and TV shows. But now Chris Rufo, a journalist, posted on Twitter some videos that show pretty much exactly what Disney behind the scenes is thinking. Watch this. Roberts and like the, the our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my like not at all secret gay agenda. And so like I, I feel like I felt like it was, I mean, like, maybe it was that way in the past, but I guess, like, something must have happened in the last, like, like they are turning it around, they're going hard, and then all that, like, momentum that I felt, like, that sense of, I don't have to be afraid to, like, let's have these two characters kiss, let's, in the background, this, like, I was just, wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to, like, the, if you see anything queer in the show. Them. But like, I, I just was like, no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. So it's not an at all secret agenda anymore because that video, which was apparently um, an all hands meeting about the Florida law. Now, Chris Rufo has posted that on Twitter and everybody's talking about the woke agenda of the world of Disney. And as you can see, she was actually happy to talk about the power that she had in introducing queer characters everywhere that she could introduce it. And the executives at Disney give her full support to do so. Now, in case you think they have Hollywood and they'll stop there, well, think again. They want to invade and they have actually invaded the education system. What about in education as well? A completely different kettle of fish. I know my sister sister has uh, received praise from one family where she was uh, really responsible for ensuring that the classroom was supportive of a trans child. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a real struggle for this kid. But primary school, so from grade one to grade seven in Australia, was a breeze for this kid because of what the teacher did. What, what, I mean, I, may I just say one thing on that? Because that is a battleground that we're facing in the United States right now. Yeah. It is, uh, it's really tough, I'll be honest with you. Um, there's, um, they're putting it under parental rights. I'm a parent, I'm married to a woman and I have two kids. So they're talking about some parental rights um, and they're excluding us and they're targeting us and they're banning books at a rate that we've never seen before. By the way, the books that they have banned, they're not math books, they're not science books, they're not chemistry books. They are pretty much books, which do not belong in the education of any kids whatsoever. Now they're turning this on its head saying that they're the victims when in all reality these books do not belong in any library or in any kids education. Absolutely sure it's being exported globally. This kind of um, framework that they've come up with that's been really effective over the past year and they're legislating against it as well. Tirana, can you give us any advice for that sector? I mean, well, I think that actually it's not so much just about the education sector, it's about keeping track of where the political narrative more broadly is going. So when you start seeing the othering 
of the community, that's when we need to start mobilising. That's when you need to start reaching out to elected members. That's when actually all parts of society, not just the community, needs to start mobilising and becoming politically active. Just so you know, in that room where they are, most of the people are CEOs and chief executives of major companies around the world. So when she's referring to the political landscape, these are the people who are actually controlling the politics of the world. They control the politicians of the world. I have to say something when it comes to school because I think there is so much happening on the ground that we're still not or we're still failing to capture uh, when it comes to educators who are pushing different narratives, when it comes to principals who are also trying to leverage different tools. Uh, uh, I think, for, for instance, in, in the context that I come from, uh, these stories are there, but there's no access to these stories. And I think we need to start tell these stories. We need to start produce more knowledge on it uh, uh, in order to make this uh, wheel move. And that's the reason why you see these characters everywhere. And they're everywhere, not for a particular reason. They're just everywhere. That's what they want. They want them to be in your face. They want to desensitize us to this. And they have everything at their disposal to make this happen. They have money, they have Hollywood, they have politicians, and they also have educators. So what's to stab them? And that is the reason why they kicked the Bible out of the school. God was a problem for them. In order for this to happen, God had to be out of the way. So what's wrong with homosexuality? Um, a number of things, but just a few in this context. Number one, it's a violation of the created order. It's a violation of the created order. It's not how we were made. Secondly, it denounces procreation categorically. It denounces procreation categorically. And I say categorically because, you know, the homosexual lobby, they try to be slick. Or are you saying that people who are beyond childbearing years shouldn't get married? No, because categorically, they are still the two corresponding parts of humanity that produce children and produce a family that is designed to raise, rear, and protect children. So categorically, they're still in the same ballpark even if they don't have children. Thirdly, it blasphemes the illustration. It blasphemes the illustration. This is especially true when we understand the illustration of Christ and his bride, the church. And then finally, it denies the very need for sanctification because it takes what God calls sinful and calls it righteous. God calls this an abomination and we instead call it righteous. It's the only sin, by the way, for which God destroyed cities with fire and brimstone. It's unique. It's unique. It's not like other sins. It's unique. Not all sins are called abominations. Homosexuality is unique in that regard. Very few sins in that category. And not all sins were the, ended in God destroying twin cities with fire and brimstone. It's unique in that regard. Not all sins are talked about in the Bible, like in Romans 1, as having a penalty in the flesh. Homosexuality is. It's unique in that regard. Okay. And you could see how lust and spiritually blind those people are. They have gathered in a room with all this money and all this knowledge and the best they could come up with is an agenda to poison the minds of our society, the minds of our children. And this whole demonic agenda started a while ago with President Obama. What about this issue of education? So again, we, we, we understand there and we'll talk about this more that our understanding of Genesis is crucial to our understanding of marriage and it's crucial to our understanding of homosexuality and its, and its inappropriateness. But what about this issue of education? How do we make this connection? Let me just give you, let me just give you one example. Um, Arne Duncan is the uh, Secretary of Education for the United States. Um, and uh, lest you think that Arne Duncan was, was brought up to be the Secretary of Education, because of his skills as an education secretary. Um, when he was the Secretary of Education in Illinois, before he came to Washington, D.C., um, only 83% of eighth graders couldn't read at grade level. And only 87% of eighth graders couldn't do math at grade level. And only 77% of eighth graders couldn't write at grade level. And only 84% of eighth graders couldn't do science at grade level. That's all. He was horrible, but he was innovative. By the way, here's what's more astonishing. Um, 
he did this by spending a modest $10,555 per year per student. Now, we homeschool our children. So I just sort of extrapolated that. And we got four who are schooling right now. And so, you know, that would be like us spending $42,220 on the education of the four children that we're educating at home right now. Give me that. <laughs> I'll do better than he did in Chicago, I guarantee you. All right? And everybody's always hollering, it's a money issue. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's a perverse amount of money to spend on education. Perverse. Doesn't cost that much. By the way, home educators outperform public and private schoolers and spend an average of less than $600 per student per year. Money is not the answer. Money is not the answer. So what was this all about? Well, he started Chicago's Annenberg Challenge, which was one of the innovative Marxist programs um, that was established there in Chicago. Uh, by the way, Bill Ayers and Barack Obama served together on the board of the Annenberg Challenge. Um, he endorsed establishing the Chicago Social Justice High School's Pride Campus. What's significant about that? Um, it was Chicago's first government high school for the promotion and reinforcement of the sodomite lifestyle. It was a gay campus. It was a gay campus. Then there's a guy, Kevin Jennings. Who's Kevin Jennings? Well, he's the founder of GLSEN, the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network. Um, his goal through GLSEN was to have a gay straight alliance in every school in America. Um, I, virtually every school district in America uh, has gay straight alliances in them. But then he developed another brilliant strategy. His strategy was to introduce a program called Safe Schools. It's an anti-bullying curriculum, or at least that's what it goes by. It's actually a pro-homosexual curriculum designed to indoctrinate school children toward the homosexual lifestyle. Um, what does this have to do with Secretary Duncan? Um, Secretary Duncan brought Kevin Jennings to Washington to be the safe schools czar to federalize his pro-homosexual curriculum for all school districts in these United States of America. This is earware. Not everywhere. Earware. That's beyond everywhere. Okay? <laughs> it's earware, y'all. So as you can see, this whole gene that started a while back, now it's on the global platform. As parents, our responsibility is to guard the mind of our children. And as much as I would like to hate these people, they are the mission field. My responsibility as a Christian is to witness to them. Your responsibility as a Christian is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because their only hope is the gospel. Only the gospel has the power to save these people. They have everything. They have money. They have education, they have connections, they have influence, they have power, but they don't have Christ. And only Christ can make them see the light. So what do we do? We press on and we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, without which no man can be saved. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Let's press on and preach the gospel to these lost souls. If you like this video, leave us a comment below and share it with someone. With love in Christ, John Henry with the gospel of Christ.